Alright guys, welcome to another video from RC Mojo. A while ago we looked at wiring up LEDs, choosing the right resistors, etc. Today we'll be going to the next step, turning those LEDs on and off from the transmitter. I've seen some uh, interesting ideas about how it works, so today we're going to have a look at what's really happening and hopefully dispel any myths along the way. Now, this isn't a tutorial, but we will point you in the right direction. If you like making stuff, this might just give you some inspiration. Okay, we've got an Ansman W3.1 2.5 gig receiver, a Savox servo and a 4 cell pack for power. As you can see, the servo is working nicely. The three connections to the servo carry ground, power and signal to the servo. Ground is common, or negative if you like. Power is the battery voltage, 5 volts here. Or if you're using an ESC, it will be the power from the back. Now the interesting one, the signal. If we try and measure it with a meter, we see 270 millivolts. Moving the servo, it goes between 180 millivolts and 360 millivolts. You may be thinking the voltage going up and down is telling the servo what position to go to. But it turns out the meter isn't the right tool for the job. It's averaging the voltage over a few hundred milliseconds, which is hiding what's really going on. So we need a bigger piece of kit, an oscilloscope. Just as before, the ground on the servo connection goes to the ground on the scope, the probe goes to the signal pin, and after fiddling with the knobs and settings, we have a nice pulse train. The display horizontal axis is time, and the vertical is voltage. So the low points are 0 volts, and the high points are at 3 volts. Remember, the meter is averaging over a long period. So with the pulse train being mostly low, the average voltage is also going to be quite low just as the meter said. But the trick here is the voltage doesn't have anything to do with the servo position. It's all in the pulse width. It's the duration of the pulse that matters. If we sweep the steering, you can clearly see the pulse width getting longer and shorter. Center is 1.49 milliseconds, left is 0.99 milliseconds, and right is 1.99 milliseconds. Actually, the spec for the pulse width is 1 to 2 milliseconds, so the Ansman default is pretty close. So, now we have something to work with. We need to be able to measure the pulse width to determine what to do with the LEDs. As it turns out, this is quite straightforward, but requires some electronics. The easiest way to go about it is using a microcontroller. Basically, a small processor with a bit of memory and some other gubbins to make it go. You can get some nice boards to put the micro in so you can program it. The micro and boards come in many shapes and sizes. The most popular these days by far is the Arduino with an 80 mega 328. It runs at 16 megahertz with 2 kilobytes of SRAM and 32 kilobytes of flash. It may not seem like much, but for this job it's actually massively overkill. These boards come in many different shapes and sizes. This one has the same micro as the Arduino, just in a different package. This one has an ARM Cortex, a relation of the processor used in most phones. This one also has an ARM micro, but a different layout. We'll use an Arduino here, which of course will need a program. The first thing we do is set up the hardware. Setting pin 13 to output, as the Arduino already has an LED attached. And we set pin 4 as the input, which is where we connect the receiver signal. Next is the main program. Arduino has a nice function called pulse in, which returns the length of a pulse. That gets stored in a variable called pulse width. Next we make sure pulse width is greater than zero, which makes sure there actually was a pulse. Lastly, if the pulse width is greater than 1600, turn the LED on, and if it's less than 1400, turn it off. That's our 1.6 and 1.4 milliseconds. So we end up with a uh, dead band in the middle. All that's left to do is hook it up and give it a test. You'll note there's some heat shrink in the cable with some components under it. That's a very simple buffer to make sure any receiver servo signal will work with the Arduino. It's nothing more than a transistor and two resistors. So there you have it, a radio controlled LED. If you take this and do a little research, a little learning, you can make something quite small. This little guy took about an hour to put together using an MSP430G2231 microcontroller. 
which only has 128 bytes of SRAM and runs at 1 MHz, which is actually plenty for this. Of course, you can go the other way too. The lights on my Land Rover are controlled by the same micro that's on the Arduino. It's measuring the pulse width of all three channels, manages indicators, reversing lights, brake lights, has multiple modes of operation, all controlled by the transmitter. So you could go to your local model shop and buy a packet with some gadget in it, but where's the fun in that? Go learn, go make stuff, you might just like it. <laughs> well, as always, thanks for watching. If you want to be notified when we upload a video, hit the subscribe button. And if you like what you see, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Thank you.